Yes. Yeah. Yes. We have a few presentations this evening. So we'll go down the list. First up, I know he's not here to fill the vacancy at the school board, so he must be here for something else. <laughs> school resource officer Bob Getke. Good evening, everybody. So Bob started with the Sheriff's Department in 1990. By the way, I was still in high school at that time. <laughs> uh, he came out to the road in 1993, and he started with Adam Anderson and with the school resource job in 2010. Is that correct? 2000, 2000, 2001. Okay. That makes sense. He's been doing it 20 years. So I had the honor of presenting him with the uh, Officer of the Year Award in 2019, and that went all the way to the uh, state. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, he has chose to retire. He leaves us officially July 30th, but your last day of actual work will be the 24th? 23rd. 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 Yeah, the 23rd yeah. the so unfortunately, I'll be gone. I'll be on vacation. Uh, so this is my last day working with Bob. You can tell he's very loved throughout the uh, township, not just at the school. Um, listing the, the ways the, the schools have said goodbye to him, the awards, the recognition, that would be a long list. Even today we had uh, a recognition from Claremont Springs Deli. They had us all over for a lunch for him because they're going to miss him. They are going to miss him. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you there s several times, buddy. Good stuff. But Bob, uh, as you know, I've started two and a half years ago as the, uh, the district commander. Uh, the outgoing district commander told me that I had to rely on the veteran officers, and Bob sure has uh, filled that bill. Uh, he's been a valuable resource with the schools. As you guys know, he runs Alice Drills, not just for the school, for businesses, for churches, um, and for government, government buildings. Uh, he's on our bike patrol. He's on our patrol rifle unit. Uh, and we're all going to miss him quite a lot. He's already got an award from the Sheriff's Department and retirement plaque and whatnot. I would like to give Bob a coin that I got when I went to, ironically enough, a school in the academy. I bought several extra coins of my own that I thought I would give to people that uh, did an outstanding job. So. opportunities that I've had. Um, the lives that um, apparently I have influenced uh, over the years. Um, I've only lived by a pretty simple motto, and that is to treat other people the way you want them to treat you in all of my circumstances. Um, you know, no matter who I was dealing with, no matter how they were towards me, I always tried to give people courtesy and the benefit of the doubt in everything that I did. Um, I am just, I cannot say enough about how wonderful Anderson Township has been to me and my family, uh, you know, since we moved here. Uh, it's not to go too long, but, I mean, we moved here. You would have told me that I was going to find a house in Anderson Township cheaper than on the west side. I would have told you you were crazy, <laughs> but we did because we were we were living in our in Cheviot and we were looking to be in the city and we wanted our our daughter to go to a decent school, and that's how we ended up here in Anderson. So, and it was something that I had been looking forward to, something that had come up was the school resource officer position. You know, when I, uh, when I didn't get it the first time, I just said, well, hey, you know, maybe, God, this isn't what, you know, what I have. But, you know, God has a funny way of looking at you and saying, wait, <laughs> you know, and sure
sure enough, and 20 years later, you know, um, you know, here I am, and just thanking you guys for uh, everything that you that Anderson has done for me and stuff like that, and for you, <coughs> Lieutenant. I have never had a better boss uh, in the short time that he's been here. Um, I've had a lot of bosses in the sheriff's office, but none who, number one, is firm but fair, um, but also, you know, will have your back, you know, so long as, you know, you're doing the right thing, he will, he will stand up for you. And uh, I thank you for that, and I thank you for this. And uh, like I said, I cannot say thank you enough, guys. Uh, seriously, I, I just can't. I mean, Anderson Township is awesome. You know, they're going to be here for a while. You know, hey, maybe someday I'll throw my hat in the ring. And <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I'd love to see you up here. Yeah. And he's so not I, leaving this, by the way. No, he's going to work for the force. Yeah, so yeah. I'll, yeah, in retirement. Um, well, I have yet the. I have my screening, uh, I have an interview, they haven't scheduled it yet, but like I said, it's just a very simple paraprofessional <coughs> position working with special needs kids, uh, helping the special needs teachers and stuff like that with the special needs kids. So we can still meet at the bill? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know if we'll be Something able to, I, I, cause I, I'll have to get it and go uh -huh. <laughs> this time. Very so. Good. so yeah, so I, uh, you can't get rid of me that easy. I thank you guys. Thank, thank you, you, Tom. <coughs> so, Officer Bob, I have a couple things for you. Uh -oh. You're known as Officer Bob. Yeah. Teachers, the administration, the school district, the people I know, you are the best. The other thing I have, if we ever have an active shooting class where we have to do a skit and they tell me to come up and take you down, I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. Well, I think you hurt your knee, but it, w yes. it, it wasn't because of me. It was somebody else. <laughs> Landing. I'm not doing it again. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I just want to say, Officer Bob and I both got an award at Nagel yes. at the very last oh, yes. day, the I Friend of Children Award. And so I got my award, and it was all eighth grade. The whole eighth grade class was in the cafeteria. I get my award, and people are <coughs> He gets a standing ovation. Those kids adore him. I mean, every kid, every eighth grader in that school was on their feet cheering for Officer Bob. Oh, it was yeah. really, uh, it was very moving. So he's been well loved by the students. Yeah. Sure was. Yeah. Yeah. So. I love the kids. Yeah. That's what it's yeah. all about. They do love you. Yeah, and you can say thank you all you want, but thanks comes from us to you and for all the years of service. And you, uh, you've been a big part of the success of this township, and uh, we appreciate it. I also appreciate the fact you're my neighbor, and I can find you anytime I need you. <laughs> or the, as you're jogging by sometimes. Right. I know that guy. <laughs> so. Well, thank you. Well, thank you very thank much. You guys. Thank, thank you guys. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Next on the presentation list is Nancy Downs. Ken, I think you wanted to say a few things. Sure. Uh, unfortunately, Nancy was not able to be here tonight, but uh, Nancy joined what was then called the clerk's office back in 1997. It's now the fiscal office. Uh, yes, that was 24 years ago. Uh, amazing how people can hang around that long, but she had a good boss, not me, but Debbie, and uh, we got through those 24 years with uh, excellent uh, reports and everything. We were changing over at that time to some manual parts of our operation, 
uh, to computer functions, and we needed someone to help with the transition. And eventually we found Nancy to be a good fit, and uh, she learned quickly, had the right personality for our office and the other departments, uh, work ethic, exceptional. Uh, she was an assistant to my assistant, Debbie Hucker, who I would say Debbie brought her along and they, uh, they learned the job uh, together. Debbie teaching her what we needed to learn for the computers. They eventually became, in my mind, the dynamic duo. And that might sound corny, but we never missed a payroll because they would come in on holidays, they would come in on the week when we had the payroll, they would work on weekends. And uh, to me, that was a relief because I didn't have to worry about it. So um, when asked about assigned duties, I always said to Nancy, your job is to make my life easy. And she did, along with Debbie. It was, it was wonderful. Hearing her laugh over the years, we were in the old building and I, could, I was only like 20 feet away. Now I'm in different offices, but you could hear her laugh and hearing her laugh over the years was enjoyable, it was infectious. It kind of got the office going. She has a wonderful husband, Bruce, and a son, Chris, Thanks for a great 24 years, Nancy. During that time, the fiscal office had 12 audits, 12 clean audits, a triple A Moody's rating, which is the highest you can get, and we never missed a payroll. Good luck to you in the future, Nancy. Uh, her replacement will be, for most of her duties, will be Michelle Moxley, uh, and she's going to start taking over. She's been training for the last uh, couple months, and uh, Debbie and I both feel that she's going to be a good replacement. So, But uh, thank you, Nancy. So well, she's not here, but... Not here, but... Thank you. <laughs> Township. That was her. That's her baby. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we owe that to Nancy. When that, went, so when, when, when that kind of dwindled a little bit, uh, she she w had a great interest in it. You know. So yeah. Yeah. She, she tried. She tried to save it, but. Yeah. Well, it's still here. I yeah. mean, it is still here. It's not here on our, but it's still going. So thanks to Nancy. Yep. Thank you. Well said, everyone. Absolutely. Our final presentation, uh, I think Paul is going to come up and do this for Sarah Donovan, who is getting Sarah, a Sarah, you got to come up too. Pretty impressive <coughs> certification. O only because we see that you don't want to come up. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So recently, Sarah passed the ASCP exam. This stands for American Institute of Certified Planners. It's offered through the American Planning Association, and that is the national association um, for <coughs> planners uh, throughout the United States. Well said. Thank you. Uh, it takes certain qualifications to, uh, to apply to even take the exam. One is your college education, whether it's an undergraduate degree or a master's degree, and then also your years of professional experience. It's not an easy exam. It covers all areas of planning, and as you know, that can be from transportation to economic development to land use to law to history. Uh, so it's a very difficult exam to pass, and so we're very proud that Sarah did pass the uh, exam. It, it, it 
goes for certification of not only your education, but also your experience, and it's very well regarded in the planning profession. So with Sarah, this becomes the third certified planner in the township. So we're very proud of her and wanted to wish her congratulations. Good job. Sarah, Sarah, do you want to say, like something? say something? You have to say something. <laughs> Thank Officer Bob. Yeah. Well, yeah, I can't beat Officer Bob. No. So <coughs> thank you all for supporting me um, through my undergrad as a co-op peer, through my master's degree, and now my certification. So I really appreciate it. What's next? Now you have to be here for 20 years. Yeah. yeah. 20 yeah. years, Sarah. It's That's been four so far. So. There you go. Now the clock starts over again. That's right. Three points more. Thank you. Well thank done. You. All right, public forum. If anybody would like to address the board, you can do so at this time. Seeing none. Andrew, do you have anything to add? quickly and um, nice to have everybody around we have some changes going on obviously but um, things are running pretty smoothly here and I'm <coughs> glad to have everyone have a nice safe summer for all the kids that are home for the summer and out of school and you know hope everyone has a nice safe calm summer Dee. Anything to add? I will add that the event he mentioned is the Independence Day Parade. Our 4th of July parade will actually be taking place on July 3rd, which is Saturday, starting at 10. Go to our website, find out any information you need to, but I don't know if they're filled up, but my guess is they're probably close. <coughs> and with that, Ken, back to you for your fiscal report. Yeah, financial reports, uh, our revenues are actually uh, over 50% now, and we still haven't had the second half real estate tax collections uh, revenues coming in. So that that's looking very good. Uh, as far as uh, the expenditures, we're less than, much less than 50%. We're like 35% right now. But that will pick up because toward the end of the year, we're going to start paying off bills that we need to clean up. But uh, that's also looking good. And one appropriation change simply because uh, our TIF in the Stonecrest has been fluctuating back and forth. I think we discussed this at the last meeting that uh, they were making payments and then they weren't. But uh, in order to keep the Forest Hill School District uh, able to get their money that they're supposed to receive, we don't have the final reports yet because the collection's not over, the second half collection. But we felt like we needed to transfer within the fund, which we don't have to report to the county auditor, $111,015, take it out of contracts and put it in the Forest Hill School District, uh, just in case. We, we don't know exactly what that's going to be, but that will cover us and allow us to pay that. So I would need your approval on that. I move to adopt the appropriation changes recommended by Fiscal Officer Ken D. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerth? Yes. And then at our next regular meeting, uh, we're going to advertise that we're going to have a public hearing on the preliminary tax budget uh, for 2022. Uh, I want to remind our department heads and administration that uh, that's something we're going, to, we're going to need to work on for the next uh, two, three weeks to get it ready. Uh, we have to present that to the county auditor's office. It's actually a four-year report going back two years and then this year and then next year that uh, we, have, we have to give them uh, particulars on that. But uh, we have to advertise it as a public hearing and that will be on Janu uh, July the 15th, uh, 2021 at 5.30. So I don't think, I don't think we have any minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Margaret, anything from your office? Uh, no reports. Thank you. <coughs> Paul is back up. Thank you. Um, <coughs> as you know, in 2020, the residents of Hamilton County voted to um, replace Cincinnati Metro's existing funding model with a new model based primarily off of county sales tax for the next 25 years. Because of this uh, new funding structure, grants are available that for projects, infrastructure projects such as sidewalks that also benefit or um, play into the transit uh, routes. So the first round of available <coughs> grants, um, the deadline is June the 30th. Of, so coming up in a couple weeks. And the township, we would like to submit a grant application for a sidewalk along Elston Road. This would go from Beachmont to Spindle Hill. Uh, we've had Stantec Engineering preliminarily look at this to determine a cost estimate. This segment of sidewalk would also tie into a previously funded project that links up to the Little Miami Trail is, is just currently under construction across the Beachmont Levee. So in order to meet the grant deadline of June the 30th, we are requesting authorization to make application and then also commit 10% local match uh, if the grant is awarded. And there's a resolution before you. This would be for costs associated, 10% uh, of the funds, um, the construction cost is 340524 so the local match would be 10% of that if awarded. And then we're also asking for authorization for associated engineering and environmental activities as well as right-of-way acquisition services if those are needed, as well as cooperative agreement with our partners, which would be the City of Cincinnati, ODOT, and the Hamilton County Engineer's Office. Uh, I okay. move to adopt uh, a resolution authorizing grant application to construct Hanson Trails Link along Elston Road and Beachmont Avenue, State Route 125 to Spindle Hill Drive, and committing local matching funds. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerd? Yes. Thank you. Uh, the next project is also a trails project, and this is along Little Drive Run and Lawyer Road. We have engaged Brandstead or Carroll Engineering to look at a sidewalk that would extend from the existing sidewalk there at Wolf Angle and Little Drive Run. Um, continue that along, Lawyer, uh, uh, along Little Drive Run and then uh, down Lawyer Road to Heatherwood. In addition to that, we're also looking at the entire stretch of Lawyer Road. And our preference is to stay on the east side of Lawyer Road uh, because the west side, there's some topography challenges. And as you know, the driveways on that side of the road tend to go very steep down to the houses. We were hoping to have a mid-block crossing at Concord Green, Green the line of sight at that intersection uh, we could not meet according to the Hamilton County Engineer's Office. It also turns out that they are resurfacing Little Lawyer Run. So we are partnering with them and have asked Francis or Carroll to do a site distance study to actually lower the roadway at that intersection. That would allow us to have a mid-block crossing, partner with them with their resurfacing project and do the construction all at the same time. So we need additional um, uh, study, engineering study from Branson or Carroll in order to do this. So there's a resolution or a motion before you for your consideration. I move to authorize staff to enter into an agreement with Branstead or Carroll Inc. to provide additional engineering services for roadway improvements and sidewalk stormwater improvements on Lawyer Road for a total cost not to exceed $11,500 as well as a 10% <laughs> contingency of $1,150 using 1994 TIF funds. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerd? Yes. Thank you. We do think that's Very the best. Very good job. Thank you. Hey, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> is yes. Spindle Hill Drive in Anderson? <laughs> <Are you fair? laughs> it is not. No. So that would be our cooperative agreement with the city of Cincinnati. It would help bring those residents to Skytop Shopping Center, though, and to UDF, which are obviously both that's in the what? Township. How many units are up there? Several hundred, right? Uh, yes. It's a big complex up there. Hmm. So 
so you could say we're helping out the city? Is that what you could say? I think it would be mutual, you know, <laughs> to, um, to bring the trail patrons up to the sky top, to also <laughs> bring the Spin Blue Hill residents down to the sky top. I think it's a win-win, really. <coughs> well said. So, thank you. Did okay. you all have any other questions? All right, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Paul. Lieutenant McElroy. Hello again. I have a liquor license request uh, from 8251 Beachmont Avenue. This is actually a transfer request uh, to the current location of O'Neill's Tavern. Uh, the new owner is going to be changing the name to The Game. Uh, it's a Class D and Class or Class D five and Class D six liquor license. Uh, Sheriff's Department has no objection to the request. I move not to object, object to a liquor license transfer request for SP Game LLC DBA The Game, located at 8451 Beachmont Avenue, Unit A. Second. Mr. Kravis? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Kerr? Yes. Hey, Thank is you. there any significance to the name The Game? Is not that like I know of. The sports I bar? it's going to be a sports bar. Like a or a gaming bar. Who's, who's the it's owner? It's not a chicken restaurant, Dean, so <laughs> let's just <laughs> leave the it The for the game is just located. Uh, That's right. The only thing I have is SB Game LLC. Mr. Okay, yeah. I just, I, I'm just curious. There they might I think it's supposed the, to be the, the, pr the present owner is leasing it to somebody else. A, yeah, and uh, what I'd heard it was supposed to be is the new land landowner is supposed to be yeah, buying that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, nothing. Thank you. Great, thank you. Gonna, you. Are you thinking about switching? Okay. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Is it really? <laughs> Are you serious? You think so? Do you want to no, tell everyone what you're no, talking about? It's not known yet. Oh. I would, I wouldn't well, you're there, speaking into the microphone, no, so it's probably a. <laughs> well, we're kind of whispering. So it's not really <laughs> Public Works, Mark, anything? Uh, Are you sure? Uh, <laughs> Okay. Fire and rescue. Bob's filling in. Okay. Vicki, then I think it's up to you. It is, and even though yeah. as a fill-in for Mr. Lugenbuehl, Mr. Magnet didn't have anything. He has the first item under administration. No, I get, I get that. Hello. Uh, on June 8th, we opened up bids for the Rexplex parking expansion. Uh, the published estimate was $385,000. Uh, we received three bids, the lowest one being $372,710.05. Uh, staff reviewed for completeness, and we recommend uh, awarding the contract to Pinnacle Paving and Ceiling in that amount, plus a 10% contingency of uh, $37,271. There's a motion for your consideration. I can answer any questions you might have. I move that this board hereby accepts the bid of $372,710.05 from Pinnacle Paving and Ceiling Inc. deemed to be the most responsive and responsible bidder for the Rexplex par parking expansion project in accordance with the bid plans and specifications together with a 10% contingency for a maximum appropriation of $409,981.05 in 1994 chip and stonecraft anthology chip funds. Further, this board hereby authorizes and directs the township administrator to give timely notice of award to the contractor and after consultation with the law director to enter into contract with Pinnacle Pav Paving and Ceiling Inc. in accordance with their bid for the Rexplex parking expansion <coughs> project. Thank you. Second. Mr. Trappist? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerth? Why are you looking this way? You it just <laughs> seems very well there lately. <laughs> Once again, that was very good. Yes. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. You're adding time to our meeting. I told you. The next item we have for the board's consideration is a resolution with which would authorize an agreement with Meals on Wheels of Southwest Ohio and Northern Kentucky 
as the board is aware this this board took over operation of the Anderson Senior Center in 2016 at that time the board authorized a contract with Cincinnati area senior services uh, to provide social services home delivered meals transportation to shopping and doctor's appointments and and different activities um, CAS has performed very well since that time in February CAS announced that they were merging with Meals on Wheels and they have now formed a group called Meals on Wheels of Southwest Ohio and Northern Kentucky uh, throughout the tenure with with CAS and now Meals on Wheels Tracy Collins who was the CEO of CAS has been um, actively involved she's been the individual that Mark and I deal with the most as far as services we found her to be very responsive as have her staff Tracy has been named the chief integration officer for this newly merged organization and uh, we reached out to her again to ask about continuing the service for another year um, what you have is a service contract the the one that's in your packet there have been a few changes that Margaret had requested that have been incorporated um, by Mo, but they have not increased their price. It was forty-five thousand dollars a year for that service. So we would ask that the board um, authorize the execution of the agreement. I move to adopt a resolution authorizing the execution of an agreement with Meals on Wheels of Southwest Ohio and Northern Kentucky. Second. Mr. Pappas. Yes. Mr. Stone. Yes. Mr. Gert. Yes. Thank you. The next item. Uh, the township fire and rescue department and I'm sure the sheriff's department as well utilize a system called Raven 911 it is basically an electronic mapping service that outlines critical infrastructure in the what's called the SoSync area and SoSync is southwest Ohio um, northern Kentucky and in, in Indiana and they provide details as far as fire stations police stations um, critical infrastructure such as chemical storage, railway, um, schools, hospitals, that type of thing that benefits our personnel when they're on emergency response. Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana Regional Council of Governments has provided this service for several years now at no cost. They are now asking that each jurisdiction assist with the um, cost of this program by an annual access fee, which is $250 per year and there is an agreement that they wish us to sign I would ask the board for authorization I move to authorize the fire chief to enter into a service agreement with Ohio Kentucky Indiana Regional Council of Governments for use of the Raven 911 system Second. Mr. Pappas yes Mr. Stone yes Mr. Gert yes thank you we have two items arising from executive session discussion the first is an amendment to a property and purchase and sale agreement that would extend um, closing into early August as the um, property purchaser the developer is working through our zoning commission to get final authorization I move to adopt a resolution approving a second amendment to real property purchase and sale agreement with Zika development LLC and authorizing the township administrator to execute and deliver a set agreement said second amendment on behalf of this board second Mr. Pappas Yes, Mr. Stone. Yes. Mr. Gert. Yes. Thank you. The last item we have is a personnel related item. Uh, this board held a special public session on Monday, June 14th, at the request of Firefighter Mike Cook as a reconsideration of discipline that was uh, administered to him originally by Assistant Chief Bob Herlinger. Uh, there was a reconsideration before Assistant Chief Herlinger and the um, discipline was upheld there was a further hearing before me I also upheld the discipline which was in the form of a demotion of one pay grade for firefighter cook and that was regarding uh, his violation of several policies and procedures as is his right through the collective bargaining agreement mr. cook had a uh, hearing before the Board of Township trustees and his union representative was present and did give testimony so there is a motion or excuse me a resolution before you for your consideration 
Thanks, Vicki. I, um, I know we were presented with a lot of information and testimony, and thank you for you and your team for putting all that together for us. And um, we were presented with even more on Monday. So, Andrew, do you guys have any anything else you want to discuss? Uh, no, I mean, this is a this is a, a appeal of, of a decision that's been made three times already, and we before we adopt this resolution, we, you know, this is something that we take very seriously and we look at it, but um, at the end of the day, both sides present information. Um, my personal opinion is I didn't see anything uh, new presented that would make me uh, countermand the two previ three previous decisions that were made, so that's my comment on the situation. Anything else? No. There is a resolution for our consideration. I move to adopt a resolution affirming the demotion of firefighter Michael Cook. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gertz? Yes. Thank you. That's all we have for the board this evening. All right. Next meeting right now is scheduled for July 15th at 5 for exec, 530 here in this room. That might change. It might. It might change. It might change. Motion to adjourn? So moved. Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gertz? Yes. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for Thank coming. You.